All right, we're going to go ahead and move on to week 10, and we're going to finish it up today um, since we have, we have plenty of time to go ahead. Um, so, all right, here we go. Jesus promised to come back one day saying, when I return again, everyone will know I'm here. It will be, be like a huge flash of lightning that fills the sky. When Jesus returns, he will restore the earth setting it free from its curse. He will destroy all evil, sin, and rebellion. There will be no more sin or sickness, pain, or death. Every Christian will be, will be resurrected and restored just like Jesus. They will live forever. God showed one of Jesus' disciples named John what this would be like in a dream. John faithfully wrote down all that God showed him. John wrote, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth were gone, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city coming down from God out of heaven. It looked like a bride, beautifully dressed and ready for her husband. And I saw a river with the water of life, clear as, a crystal, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of Jesus. It flowed down the, the center of the main street in, this, in the holy city. On each side of the river grew a tree, and both were a tree of life. On them was enough fruit to heal all the nations of the world. No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of Jesus will be there, and his disciples will be wor there worshiping him, and they will see his face, and they will be known and marked as his own. There will be no, more, no night there, time there, no needs for lamps or sun, for God himself will shine on them. And together... They will rule over everything forever and ever. Then I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is again among hu the humans. He will live with them, and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sadness or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And Jesus, sitting on the throne, said, Watch, I am making everything new. Everything has happened as planned. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. Everyone who overcomes the world, those who believe in me and allow me to conquer sin and selfishness for them, will inherit all these blessings. I will be their God, and they will be my children. But everyone who chose to rebel and never trust in God's gracious sacrifice has sent away from God's good, has was sent away from God's good presence in the lake of fire that is the second death. And Jesus said, "Watch as you wait for me because I am coming back soon." Amen. All right. When you heard this story, what did it remind you of in the bigger story we have heard so far? Yeah, it reminds you of the Garden of Eden. Um, what happened in the Garden of Eden? What? Okay, but what what was happening before that? Okay. Anything else? Uh, in, when you heard this story, what did it remind you of in the bigger story we've heard so far? Okay. Okay. So God expressing his love for his people, right? Um you know, and Joey said the the garden love the way things were originally. You know, anything else? Yeah. 
Okay. So it's all the things God has promised that are coming back together uh, and, and coming and colliding into the, the final thing. Uh, you know, one of the things you know, that I, I hear, you know, is that God's, God's home will be with man again, right? You know, you, you think about the garden and Adam and Eve were walking with God in, in God's presence. Uh, and and that, that's a, you know, and then humans had no death and, and no suffering. They lived forever. Um, you know, and then, you know, the judgment is over at that point, right? There's no more judgment. Um, and it is how God intended it to be. Um, what do we see that was broken early in the story that is now reconciled and restored? All of creation. Okay. Creation's restored. Okay. What else? What else? A part is part of that. Re- creation is a lot of different things in this, right? Um, but what else? What else in that is, you know, is restored. Think about the curse and the things that were broken and then think about what was restored. Yeah. 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 No birth pain? Okay. All right. What about the relationship? Like, you know, part of the curse is the relationship between the man and the woman is broken. So relationships are restored. Uh, The ground, you know, if you talk about uh, just Genesis chapter 3 and the things that are broken, the ground is now broken. You know, you have to work the soil because it's no longer doing what that now this is, nature has been restored. That's all part of all of creation, right? Um, let's see. Um, life, which was meant to last forever, is now restored, you know. And you go back to the nature one, you know, the new heaven and the new earth, basi- and the new garden, basically, is a restoration of the earth into, into that. So who's doing the restoring here, though? It's an easy one. <laughs> Not a trick question. God, or d- through Jesus, right? Um, Jesus is the one that makes all things new. He's the one that all things were created for, by, and through, right? And so Jesus is the one making um, all things new. Um, how does it make you feel that if you are in Christ, his disciple, you will live forever? It's reassuring, okay? Have you thought about it before? (laughs) I mean, that's the... um. Being clean? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, but that doesn't mean you won't have a job in heaven. Right. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, because we were created with jobs, right? We were created to work. So the idea is probably that we will be back to what we were originally intended to do, or the work that we were originally intended to do. 
So, sorry, Joey. You still have to go to work after. <laughs> after. Um, I, you know. Except you're enjoying it. Yes, you're going to enjoy the work that you have because you're going to be in the presence of God. You know, I don't know, it's kind of a mind-blowing kind of thing to think about living forever, you know. Of course, I think when we're teenagers, we kind of think we're going to live forever, you know. <laughs> I don't know if y'all remember that too much about th- not ever thinking about death and, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> You've thought about death because you almost crashed the car. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But, um, in the story, we see all nations living together in peace, worshiping God forever. What's this, what does that show us about what God is doing, now doing among his people, Jesus' disciples? How are, we, how are we to live in light of that? So that's like two questions. So what it, let me ask it again, because in the story we see all nations living together in peace, worshiping God forever. What does that show about what, what God is now doing among his people, Jesus' disciples? But it, what is God doing? Not what we, not what humans are doing, because we understand that humanity is broken and and is under the curse, right? But God is taking His disciples and doing something with them, right? So what is He doing? Okay, in the story, we see all nations living together in peace, worshiping God forever. What does that show us about what God is now doing among his people, Jesus' disciples? Okay, he's restoring them, um, and and so that's leading to God. Is, God is making his disciples agents of reconciliation, right? And and res- and using his disciples to um, to restore things around them, you know, through Jesus Christ, right? Restoring things to the way they should be, and becoming agents of reconciliation. And so this brings in a foretaste of what, what God is doing and will do among the nations in the, in the future. And so we're supposed to be like, and you'll hear this this morning again, we're like the coming attractions at the movies, right? Uh, just a taste of what God is doing, in all, and he's using us. And so he's using his people to restore and then in one day, he will restore all of things to the way they should be. Um, so, in that, how should we live? Okay. 
Okay, we shouldn't live in a way under the cu- that looks like we're under the curse. Okay. Okay. Okay, we should be living in a way that undo, un, undo, undo, undoes. <laughs> I was like, you said undo. <laughs> I was like trying to, here, undoes the, the curse, right? We're living in a way that, you know, we, because our relationship with God has been restored, we restore relationships with others, right? And so we, we live, live out of what God has done and become agents of reconciliation, we look for what things that are broken, and we, we do what our part through Christ in restoring them to the way they should be. Now, we can't, do, we can't restore everything ourselves, but you know, we, can, we can go into an area as a, a community of disciples and, and work on restoring things to the way they should be. And so... Um, that that's kind of how we should live, right? Agents of reconciliation, uh, as as Paul calls us, um, and so anything else out of that? Okay, okay. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Uh, um, all right. Anything, this is the end of our, our well, not now nine weeks, but it was originally supposed to be ten uh, week story of God. Anything you would like to say, share, you know, um, if you're online later, uh, comment. I'm going to end the thing here. If there's something you want to say that you learned, go ahead and comment in the in the comments. The lights are flashing, so um, and that's going to be the. End.